Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We will now proceed to make the provisional restorations for our patient. From the dispensing desk, another item that we have that can be checked out, there's a place where we have temporary crown copings. They come in a green packet similar to this. When we peel the packet back inside, we see a nylon sleeve or coping with ribs on the side of it. This also has a flatted surface on the inside. This can line up with our solid abutment and be pressed in place. If necessary, the height of this can be adjusted so we can take an acrylic burr and cut the height of this down. We then just simply come in with a temporary crown form and we can often use an aluminum shell crown form that has been sized appropriately. Trim it at the cervical aspect so the cervical aspect of the aluminum shell crown fits very nicely to our space and the marginal ridges line up nicely with the marginal ridges on the adjacent teeth. So once the aluminum shell crown has been appropriately trimmed, we can fill it with self-curing acrylic and place it on over the top of this temporary coping sleeve and the self-curing acrylic will lock into these little ridges or ribs on the sleeve. Likewise on the wide necked implant we have another one of these temporary copings that's a slightly larger version. Flat side on the inside, the ribs on the outside. And we can line flat to flat and seat this down to place for our crown. As an alternative to this is you can take one of the analogs and ahead of time simply make a plastic coping. So all this is is a plastic coping that was painted on over the top of a spare analog that we had. And this plastic coping fits down very nicely on our implant abutment in place and we can form a temporary crown over the top of this. Either way works just fine. In preparation for pouring our model, we want to make a soft tissue model in the area around the implants. To do this, we just take a micro tip applicator, one of these very small sponges on a plastic stick, and we take a little bit of triad model release agent and apply a thin film of Vaseline to the PVS impression in the area of our implant pickup basket. So I'm just taking a little bit of Vaseline and putting a thin coating of Vaseline on the PVS impression around that basket. And I'll do the same over here in the area of our two adjacent posterior implants. What we then do is come in with our material called Gingitech. And again, this is a material that you can check out at the dispensing desk. It's on our green requisition form toward the top. When we use it, we want to use one of these very small mixing tips with the blue hub so that we don't lose too much of this material because it's quite expensive. And then one of these little extensions on the end of the mixing tip, which gives us a very fine point. And again, I place enough of that material to come up to the top of the impression basket. Now, if some of the Gingitech material gets on our analog. You can just take your micro brush and clean it away. I usually just wipe it on my hand. If a little bit of the Gingitech tries to go down into the impression of the tooth adjacent to our implant, you can just take your micro tipped applicator and just carefully brush it or clean it out of the way. So what I'm left with is my Gingitech material that is surrounding my impression basket, but none is going down into the areas of the teeth adjacent. I'm now going to do exactly the same thing around the two implants on the other side and just flow it around the white impression baskets enough to come up to the edge of the white impression basket. So here again we've 
float our ginger tech on so it comes up to the top of the white baskets. If any of it tries to flow down into the tooth space adjacent to it, just take your micro-tipped applicator and use a twirling motion. Roll it along that area and it will very nicely clean that ginger tech right out of there. What we will now do is proceed to pour the model up with dental stone. In pouring the model up with dental stone, I find an easy way to do that is to use a styrofoam cup and some alginate to box this impression. So what we'll be doing is we'll be placing this impression down in some alginate so that we can box the impression and I'll show you what is involved in that. To make that easier, the first thing I want to do is to remove my tray handle. So what I'm doing now is simply cutting the handle off the tray. I take one of our old friends that we had used previously, our number 11 disposable blade as a handle and stick it right down in the PVS material to pick this impression up with. So what I'm going to do now is mix some alginate with warm water so it sets up fairly quickly and I'm going to suspend this impression in the alginate mixed with warm water until the alginate sets up and it forms a boxing for this impression. So what I'm going to do now is to mix one packet of alginate with more water than would normally be used. For this purpose what I do is I take one measure and fill it clear to the top. I take a second measure and fill it clear to the top. I take a third measure and fill it about two-thirds full. So for one packet of alginate I'm mixing it with one, two, and two-thirds measures of water. So I get my packet of alginate open. put my knife back in my impression, place my alginate in my mixing bowl. So now what I'm going to do is go off camera just for a moment and I'm going to get two and two-thirds measures of warm water. So I have my two and two-thirds measures of warm water for my alginate and I'm trying to use fairly small mixing strokes. I also take my spatula horizontally through the mix to try to break up the small pieces of powder that inevitably are in my mix. What I will now do is take my alginate and pour it into my styrofoam cup. Take my impression and lower it right down in this cup and you can see when I lower that down in I'm suspending the impression in the alginate and you can see that much of the alginate physically flows into the inside of the impression. Don't worry about that at all because we're going to trim away the excess alginate once the alginate has uh, polymerized or come to a set. And because we mix it with warm water, you can check it with your finger. It doesn't take very long at all for the alginate to fully set up. You can see that when I set the impression, I wanted the alginate mix to come right up to the very edge of my impression. That some ran in the impression is of no consequence because you'll see we're able to remove that very easily. So what I'm going to do now that the alginate has fully set up and very similar to taking a molded jello out of the jello mold, what I'm going to do is go around the perimeter of our styrofoam cup with our spatula and very carefully of our container and I also squeeze and flex the container a little bit. You can see that lets air enter along the sides of the alginate between the alginate and the bowl. So here is my impression encased in alginate. So what I now want to do is take my 11 blade and just carefully go around and trim the alginate away from the areas in which I don't want it. So I can trim this and then very carefully just lift the alginate out of the impression and it lifts out really quite nicely. Here again 
find the edge of the impression, trimming the excess alginate out. We can just lift this right out. What I usually do by convention is go along and trim to the posterior aspect of my impression. So I trim the excess alginate away so I'm right into the very edge of my impression and likewise with the other side. Now very often as I'm trimming this that you see happen here, I encounter one of these little inclusions of the dry powder. And this is just dry powdered alginate on your impression. What I do is prior to pouring this up now, I just replace my alginate back in the styrofoam cup that I had it in initially. If you just rinse this out with some warm water, just briefly rinse it out, it will very quickly flush any of this alginate away completely. And what I will then do is just mix up a packet of microstone, and I'm going to just pour this impression in microstone at the vibrator. I'm going to mix one packet of microstone, and I'm going to go ahead and pour this impression right in this cup. And doing this procedure with the alginate material to embed the impression is called boxing the impression. So what I have done while we've been off camera is simply to mix one packet of microstone with 40 milliliters of water and then with a vibrator just carefully vibrate the stone into my model. So now when I separate this I'm going to have a stone model that represents our patient with analogs or copies of the implant and the solid abutment on the implant for the fabrication of our definitive crowns for the patient. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.